Hi, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and an energy worker and a channel. And uh, at my site at tdjacobs.com, you can find a bunch of tools uh, to work with along uh, your journey, including the new uh, Soul's Journey Soundbite database to help you learn evolutionary astrology. Uh, this video today is on Chiron. It's an overview of Chiron, and it's the first in a series of videos where I am going to talk about different things about Chiron, including you know some natal aspects and houses and signs. Um, it's one of the archetypes that I specialize in, but I haven't um, spent a lot of energy producing materials like this. There's like stuff on my site, the new Chiron pages are on my site. They're going to be good resources. Um, and I have a Chiron report, a NATO report, and also a book and an audio course. The book is a transcription of the audio course and I've taught on it. But as far as like having a, you know, like a playlist here on YouTube, uh, just a bunch of videos where you can just uh, watch, you know, different topics like I did months ago with the true black moon Lilith. Uh, I haven't done that yet. So I wanted to, uh, to introduce that. I feel that uh, Chiron, learning about Chiron is extremely important for a bunch of different reasons. Um, most of them will become apparent as I describe what I do with Chiron. Um, the first thing uh, to say is that I work with Chiron you know, as an archetypal energy or an archetype uh, within a person as the energy antenna. Essentially, that someone is sensitized to energy, which also includes emotion, and that part of the self is Chiron. Now, to differentiate it, with Moon, we feel love, we feel connection. With, Venus, uh, with uh, Neptune, we feel like a wide open sensitivity to all kinds of things around us, like a satellite dish or a, a, a fishing net cast you know, over a wide area. But with Chiron, it's, it's a very pointed, specific frequency. Whatever our Chiron wounding is, which I'll explain here in a minute, uh, how, that, how that works and where it comes from, uh, we're sensitized to other people's particular things, you know, that are related to that. Uh, it is that we're in general, like beyond our specific wounding frequency, the kind of um, issue, we are sensitive to others' emotions and energies, and Chiron in the chart talks about that. If we talk about sun as the function within you that organizes a coherent sense of self that is vital and creative, that um, has... Uh, you know, to speak its mind, to like has an opinion. We talk about Mercury as perception, processing information, learning, gathering data, communication, talking, writing, speaking. Uh, then, um, you know, Venus as the relating function, how we go about creating fairness, harmony, what we expect of others, how we deal with how they see us, that whole give and take thing. Chiron is the energy antenna sensitizes us to energy and emotion. So that's the first uh, unique, um, the first of several unique approaches that I employ when thinking about Chiron. Now about, I wanna talk about myth and archetype, uh, and I wanna tease those out a little bit. Myth, mythology, myth is always uh, stories or a set of stories that we hand down throughout generations and even cross-culturally to teach each other how to deal with things, how to be a, a, um, a, the right kind of member of a group, a society, a family, a religious tradition, something. That's what mythology is all about. Cautionary tales and uh, encouraging tales. Hey, if you do this, it's great. If you do this, eh, it's not so great. But archetype is actually the part of your consciousness that seeks to unfold, that needs to make certain choices and um, encounters the need to make certain choices and has to deal with actual life. So mythology can be a set of stories. Archetype is what we're actually experiencing, what we actually feel, what we think, what we need, you know, the, 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 um, the story arcs we're playing out in our lives. So in all of my work on, on mythology, I tease out myth versus archetype. Um, this is important because, especially with Chiron, because the story that, we're pr most prevalently hearing uh, in astrology about Chiron's wound um, is a myth that's teaching, a, that's sending a message that I, that I encourage us strongly to grow beyond. And it is this idea of, uh, and you're, if you're familiar at all with Chiron and astrology, you, you've read and heard this, um, that he's the wounded healer, that he gets uh, inadvertently wounded with poison in one way or another, uh, an arrow or whatever, but he gets poisoned. And because he's immortal, he can't die. 
So he's in a state of suffering. And eventually he works out with, I believe it's Zeus, to trade places with Prometheus to give up his immortality, free Prometheus, and then Chiron can actually die because Prometheus is being punished for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to humans. He's the champion of humanity. And uh, his punishment is to be chained to this rock. And every day, this giant vulture or eagle, the story depends, the detail depends on the story, comes to eat his liver out. Then it flies away and the liver grows back. And then the bird comes back the next day. So this perpetual punishment for uh, thinking he's better than the gods, right? So in that deal, then, uh, as I said, Chiron gives up his immortality. He can finally die. So that story I find very unsettling because the kind of chironic pain and suffering, the woundedness that we may have, that story seems to teach us that we can't heal it. And even on the very fundamental level of, you know, the, what I would call a false dichotomy, but the currently understood options with Chiron, wounded, wounded healer. So you're either indulging in suffering or lost in it. I say indulging, I don't mean to insult anybody, but you're either in that process or you're a wounded healer, you're helping other people with the pain you have, but you can't heal yourself. That's the myth. That's the social instruction about pain and suffering and how to deal with emotions. So the second unique thing that I employ regarding a Chiron is I go back to the actual first wounding event, which is when he was born. And that, uh, when he was born, he's a centaur, he's half horse, half human, but his mother didn't know that would be true. She sees him, she basically says something like, get this monster away from me. He's taken away and he's raised by others. He's raised by Apollo and Diana. So he learns a bunch of cool stuff, but the rejection from your mother or your parent, your family, is the first wound. So I treat the poison as the second wound. The first wound is this thing at birth. So the, the, the reason why this happens, happens with Chiron is um, his mom, um, who is a nymph, is minding her own business, and Kronos, we know as Saturn, sees her from afar and says, uh, I'm going to hit that. And he chases her, she takes a form of a horse to run away faster, and he takes a form of a horse and overtakes her and essentially rapes her. When the baby's born, she's back to her humanoid form immediately, right? Pretty quick. And when the baby's born, he's half horse, half human. So that's why she's surprised. There's something about him that surprises her and she rejects him because of her own fear, pain, shock, whatever it is. So her own deal leads her to reject him He's, you know, raised by other people. So there's a chironic wound in each person, which is a, an apparent or an actual rejection when we're born, when we're in the womb, or when we're very, very young. And that part of us gets shaped before we understand what's happening, before we feel independent. I'm talking about days, weeks, months old, uh, before we can care for ourselves, before our parents are demoted from being goddess and god where they're the source of love and, and the chironic wounded part of us will feel that we're not worthy of love. So the wo chironic wound in every person is a wound of rejection. And it can be, you know, something like the parent has full eye contact with the baby, the baby feels safe and engaged and relaxed. And the parents, you know, attention is taken away by a noise or something is happening really quickly and unexpectedly. It could be as simple as that. It can also be the baby picking up on how people talk to him or her or about him or her. It could, the baby, babies are picking up energy and emotion left and right. And, um, and it can be an actual rejection thing where the baby just can tell that something's wrong and someone doesn't love him or her. So it can be very complex, it can be very simple, but the point is every single one of us has a wound of rejection. Now, in your Chiron house, in your natal chart, that's about what part of life this rejection takes place in. Uh, and in future videos, when I talk about the houses in separate videos, I'll, you'll, you'll get more of this. The sign of your natal Chiron is, uh, is what mode of being you feel will get you rejection. So again, more info on that later, but the basic idea is everybody's dealing with a wounded child. Now this doesn't say that, this isn't to say that everybody's uh, 
a hopeless case and no, you, no, because my thing about Chiron is everything can be healed. That's my thing about Pluto too and everything else. Everything can be healed. You simply have to know what you're actually dealing with and not shelve it, not sweep it under a rug or whatever. But as you live your life what, as an adult, when Chiron within you gets activated, that Chironic part of you, the younger part, you may have essentially a clueless baby take over sweep, you know, kind of you're swept off your feet by the pain, the fear, the anxiety, the whatever, guilt or shame, whatever, of a young part of you who can't be reasoned with and who doesn't understand what you understand. Routinely working with Chiron in client readings, people lose their footing when the Chiron stuff is triggered and they don't understand why they become incapable of making sound, healthy, grounded decisions. And it's because a part of us takes over. So the chironic wound of rejection is the central thing about the natal placement. Um, and again, I have the Chiron natal report, which will explain yours in detail. You can get through tdjacobs.com. Um, but this wounding is what we're talking about. Everyone carries that separately or on top of that, another layer, we are sensitive as we just live our lives, we're sensitive to others' emotions and energies. So one of the keys to, to Chiron is compassion, but we have to take that to the inner kid so that then we can carry compassion and parts of us don't take over with fears of rejection or being worthy of rejection. And then we can embody compassion and get beyond our sensitivity and our hair trigger reactions regarding being wounded. If you think about that wounded, wounded healer, you know, apparent, I would say false dichotomy, uh, you're either in pain or you're in pain and you're trying to help other people who have the same pain. What kind of a message is that? And then the, in the Chiron story, this mythology bit that, that makes me nuts is uh, like if you listen to the second wound as being the problem, the, the, Oh, I'm co constantly suffering and it will never end. And that myth seems to offer you the image that death is preferable to suffering and pain. Now, remember, part of you is so young and inexperienced and green and naive and needs parenting that any pain is too much pain. And remember that part may sweep you off your feet or may uh, sweep, you know, rush in, take over, and you feel like you don't have the tools and the wherewithal to be an adult. So just, you know, the, my Chiron teaching has a lot to do with inviting people to change their minds about what pain and suffering mean. And what, you know, the fact that, you know, we as individuals can pick up on others' energies, like what does that mean? And what does it mean if I love, you know, you or this person, person A, B, or C, but I can't handle what that person's feeling right now? Am I a bad person if I don't open up to help that person, if I don't try to be there for that person? And all of this is to say, this Chiron teaching I'm offering has to do with helping you understand more about being an energetic being. You're not a brain who happens to have this pesky body and this pesky heart. You know, you're not um, any of the things that kind of like a, the, the, our, our, our uh, uh, histor history of enlightenment has taught us about ourselves, where the, where the, the mind and therefore the ego is, is uh, primary and all matters and all concerns all the time, every day. Uh, you're not your brain. You're not your ego. I, I don't shame ego, but I invite us to align ego with something that's true or bigger than we are so we can feel part of this universe, not trying to control every aspect of what's going on. That's, a, that's an ego kind of thing. So, um, so with Chiron, you're actually an energetic being. You're consciousness. And for a time, some longer than others, you are anchored, your consciousness that exists across time, your soul, is anchored in a physical body. So part of this Chiron thing involves the context of what I'm gonna describe here which is what I've channeled from the Ascended Master I work with, whose name is Jehuti, D-J-E-H-U-T-Y. That's his chem or ancient Egyptian name, chemetic name. 
Uh, and also he's known as Thoth or Toth, Toth, whatever. Also Saint Germain, Merlin, and Hermes. He's the Hermes figure, Hermes Trimed Justice. So the teachings from him about this are that um, every soul comes to be human in order to learn what it's like. And every soul is watching its human selves, many across time, uh, to see if what it will take, this is a good way to say it, what it will take for the human to learn to go from fear into love. Because loving frequencies are the power of the soul. So to embody our divine nature here in bodies involves compassion, acceptance, generosity, kindness. But we have to deal with our feelings along the way. So I'm not saying that all those, you have to shame your bad feelings. You have to learn how to process them. And that's a huge part of what Chiron is about. Now, if you walk into a room and people start laughing, it can be contagious. If you walk into a room where people are celebrating, you're going to feel the joy, right? You're going to be, oh, what's going on? If you walk into a room and somebody has just made the announcement that somebody passed away or that the sky is falling and we have 10 minutes to live, you know, some kind of thing, you're going to feel the energy in the room. But also, you're going to feel residues of energies in different places. Let's say that that celebration happened and was over 10 minutes ago. You walk in, you might not realize it, but you're, you're going to feel the residues of happiness. The same way with sorrow, pain, arguments, doubt, worry, guilt, shame, whatever, you're going to feel the residues of those energies. So you, most humans don't understand that a human is an energetic being because our minds have appointed themselves dictators for life. So the Chiron teaching is, is in several, that I'm offering is in several ways uh, or in several levels, um, dealing with the inner wounded kid and our, our, our sense of insecurity and vulnerability that can make us feel that we're worthy of rejection. Again, how sign and aspect matter in your birth chart. Uh, and then the other level of it is being aware of others' energies, whether that's individual or you know, the masses, um, it kind of depends on what's going on in your birth chart with Chiron. Uh, it can be both. It can be, it's always the individual. It can be both, you know. So, um, so that's the kind of basic idea of this, uh, of the premise of my teaching. This, I'll, I'll tell you where I get this teaching and how I developed it. Um, I'd say, I think it's fair to say I got the seeds of the teaching uh, when channeling. In 2008, in early 2008, now just 10 years ago, I think it was April or May of 2008, I sat down and asked this ascended master whom I was getting used to channeling. Um, I was being tutored by him. I was asking questions. He was helping me out with some answers to things to spiritual issues uh, as well as questions about astrology and soul. And I asked him what's going to happen in 2012 because I uh, have been reading things and I'm just curious like what you have to say because I'm not quite sure what I'm reading is, you know, really grounded. It's just kind of like predictive stuff that you know, I'm just not sure. And his answer was, here is how to understand better Chiron as this marker of energy sensitivity and how humans are learning about themselves as um, uh, energetic beings and what that means. And I was like, well, that's great. And I wrote some stuff down. And then I came back a week or 10 days later and I said, hey, Judy, thanks a lot for what you shared last time. I want to ask again, hey, you know, what's going to happen in 2012? Can you help me understand 2012, the end of the Mayan calendar? And he says, here's part two of the Chiron teaching. And this went on for, I think, five or six different sessions. And he was basically talking about, he basically said, this is about Chiron. And then he said, it's about opening the heart. It's about dealing with your emotions. It's about individuation. It's about, you know, Chiron is very resourceful and Chiron issues are always, or Chiron energy within us is unique and approaches things in unique ways and is very resourceful. Um, so he's laying all this out and I translated that into uh, an astrology teaching after playing with it, you know, with my clients and charts. So, um, so that this is uh, taking us to, to the end of this uh, first video in the series, this overview. Um, yeah. Thank you for your time and energy and check out the Chiron book. It's called a uh, Chiron 2012 and the Aquarian age, the key and how to use it just because 2012 is in the title doesn't mean it's outdated because the end of the Mayan calendar, the 2012 is actually an opening into a longer phase of human evolution that I explain in the book. Um, and also the audio course that the book is a transcription of. And the audio course is kind of half channeled. So if you get that, don't listen to it while you're driving. 
uh, or operating like uh, heavy machinery or multitasking because it may alter your consciousness a little bit. Um, also the, the new Chiron natal report and uh, also the asteroid and centaur class includes Chiron plus uh, 10 other archetypes in my, in my, uh, at my site. So that's all at tdjacobs.com. Uh, thanks for playing and I'll, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.